Hello, John Talley here with Partzilla.com. Today we're going to be working on our 2011 Polaris Sportsman 850. Specifically, we're going to go back and we're going to replace the, uh, the brake disc, if you want to call it. Some people call it a rotor, other people call it a brake disc. At any rate, I know from previous uh, workings on this particular machine that it needs to be replaced in a big way. So we're going to bring it up in the air, get that front tire off, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Let's get started. All right, guys, so we've got her up in the air, and like I promised, <laughs> this, the, this disc is in sad shape. It probably is at least two millimeters worn off of it, and it's pretty much going to destroy these brand new brake pads if we don't do something about it. So here's what we need to do. Go ahead and collapse the, uh, the caliper, remove these two 15 millimeter bolts, lay it out of the way, pull off the center cap, and there's probably going to be a cotter pin and then the axle bolt on the other side of it. We're going to take the whole assembly off, and we're going to knock out these studs, put, put on our new disc, and then draw the, uh, the new studs back through it. So, let's get it going. There's our cutter pin. Just going to spray a little penetrating fluid on here because she is just about corroded solid. Special tool number 112. Pretty sure it doesn't tell you how to do that in the Polaris manual, but hey, it worked. So we're going to definitely replace that. That bolt's going to be a little tough to get off. And of course, I'm in a shop. I have one of these, so I'm going to end up using it. But if you don't have air or an impact, you can use a long pry bar. Get it in there like that. And then break it loose because we're going to actually replace these studs anyway, so it really doesn't matter if they get marred up a little bit right now. All right, notice when you took these out, they're actually beveled, so you want to make sure they go back in the same direction, because that's holding tension on it. All right, guys, the service manual for this unit suggested that you just lightly tap the disc to detach it from the axle. <laughs> However, in this particular case, you can tell I had to put a lot more muscle into it than that. Trust me, it took a lot to get this thing off the hub and get it to detach. All right, now that we've pulled it apart, it didn't come apart the way the manual says it should. So what it actually did was destroy that inner bearing. So we're going to have to replace that. But now with that off, all we needed to do, had it come apart as it should, is knock out these studs, replace the disc, and then put it back together. As you can see here, the inner carrier actually stuck to the, uh, the axle or the hub itself. Now I'm going to have to pry that off, and that's going to take a little bit of uh, work to get it done. I'm going to try it just up on um, this vise on that flat surface, see if I can get it started, see if that's going to work for us. The service manual suggests that you use a press to push this unit out. I've got one, but I'm just going to do it you know, using a hammer and a, uh, a punch tool to get it done. It's bottomed out against the carrier, but well, now that we've got it started, it should go ahead and push through. Wahoo! Well, she's out. <laughs> it wasn't pretty, but it's out of there. All right, to get the new bearing back in without using a press, just start by lightly tapping around the edges to get it centered, and then really start driving it home to get it to seat completely. Once it is seated, all you have to do is replace the retaining ring. There we go. Now it's seated all the way around. Next, we're gonna have to get that inner race off the hub. I've got a couple of different tools that I'm going to be working with to get this done. We'll start off with the uh, the punch and just start to pry it off to about halfway. 
Then we'll put it in the vise, clamp down on it just enough to where it'll hold it, and then knock it free. All right, taking a look at the hub, I would recommend using a wire brush to straighten out a couple of these edges that were uh, damaged when I was using the, uh, the punch to get that inner race off. Just want to get it cleaned up all the way so we can get the new bearing to seat on it. <laughs> now we can finally install our brake disc. All of that just to get a brake disc replaced. Unbelievable. The brake disc itself is just attached by these wheel studs that are just pressed in there. Now getting it all reinstalled is just the reverse of what we did to take it apart. You want to make sure you put plenty of grease on the inside of the hub. This will keep it from freezing up should you have to pull it back off. Now, with everything lined up, we just want to gently tap it back onto the shaft. And don't forget to install the washers correctly. They're cone-type washers, and you want the center section pointing out. From this point, all you need to do is just tighten it down. I believe it's a 27 millimeter socket, and we want to take that to 80 foot-pounds. All right, guys, this wasn't part of the game. But I noticed that the, uh, the rubber on this tie rod end was uh, ripped. And especially when I tried to move it up, that just made it worse I mean, when I tried to grab this lower section to hold it still. So we're going to go ahead and get it replaced. Uh, what we're going to do is break this locking nut, you know, uh, break it loose. And then we're going to count the number of turns it takes to extract it. And that will tell us how many turns to go back in with the new one. 14 is going to be our number. I don't know if y'all were paying attention, but this uh, is actually a reverse thread. <laughs> All right. And don't forget your cotter pin. When you're putting the brake caliper back on, make sure you pay special attention to how the brake line is positioned. It should look like this, going over and around and underneath the AR. All right, guys, we've got the bearing in place. We've got our new studs in place. We've got our new brake disc in place, along with new brake pads. And we went ahead and replaced that uh, tie rod in. Next, we need to get this bolt to 80 foot-pounds. How do you hold it? Well. What you do is you get an assistant to hold the brake, and they would wave over there. That's my version of Vanna White, and she's going to hold the brakes while I put 80 foot-pounds on this. A little bit harder. There we go, 80 foot-pounds. All right, with that, just need to straighten out our cotter pin a little bit more get it through and then get that um, that dust cover in place. All right guys, that pretty much wraps it up. I know we were just replacing a, a brake disc and it got a little bit more involved than that, but you know sometimes that's the way things happen. Listen, if you need any of these parts, come see us at partzilla.com. If you have any questions, comment, just leave them below and I'll do my best to answer them. And until next time, we just want to say thanks for watching. <laughs>